Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. May the Lord bless you upon us His blessing, mercy, grace, mercy, grace, and wisdom now and ever to the age of ages. Today is the second Sunday of the blessed month of Abib, and uh, as we um, have been saying usually, the theme of the month is related to a major feast, if there is one, um, in that month. Um, and so, last month, the major feast was what? For the month or so was uh, the Holy Pentecost. So that month is related to the Holy Spirit, right? So this month, which which he just uh, began, um, we celebrated the feast of the commemoration of the apostles. So that's the theme of the month. Last week, what was the commissioning or the sending out of the apostles uh, from Luke 10. <clears throat> and today we see the virtue of that the apostle or the Christian must have. So the Lord begins by speaking about the importance of, after answering the question that the disciples ask, who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And so the Lord says, if you want to be great, you have to be little. Um, and he says, whoever humble, and then he brings the little child in front of them and says, you have to be like this. You have to be converted or you have to advance or mature to be like this little child. Um, <clears throat> and he focuses primarily on the virtue of what? When, when he uses the example of the child, humility, right? He says, therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. <clears throat> so we'll take just some guidance from the Desert Fathers, especially Dorotheus of Gaza, uh, on the wisdom of, of humility. <clears throat> And as the church teaches us in her wisdom, uh, this virtue is of utmost importance. As one of the fathers used to say, before anything, we, we need humility. And so <clears throat> um, Dorotheus of Gaza begins to question the father who says this, and he says, well, what about the other virtues that are mentioned in, in the scriptures, like the importance of faith or the fear of God um, and things like that? And, he, and then the response was, Neither fear of God nor self-control nor any of the other virtues can set us right without humility. Therefore, he says we need humility first. <clears throat> um, because if we gain the whole world and lose our own soul, what is the benefit of that? Um, <clears throat> so, as the Lord says in another place in the gospel, so today the gospel is from the gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 18. And in actually Luke chapter 18, the Lord says, he who humbles himself will be exalted and he who exalts himself will be humbled. So uh, St. Dorothy's continues by saying, humility protects the soul from all the passions and also from every temptation. And he gives the example of uh, St. Anthony the Great when he saw all the snares and the traps of the devil before his eyes spread out everywhere. Um, he sighed and he asked God, how can anyone be saved? Um, and how can how could how can a person avoid all of these? And so, uh, a voice from heaven answered him, saying, "Humility. It is humility that enables you to escape all of these traps." Um, <clears throat> and uh, Dorotheus comments and says, "What's more astonishing is that he added, uh, they cannot even touch you.' So this is why not only in the desert." Uh, the saints strive for humility, but the Christian um, himself or herself should strive for this great and important virtue because through it, the benefit is we can't be touched by the devil and we can trample on serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy. <clears throat> and St. Basil the Great said, Humi humility often saves a sinner who has committed terrible transgressions. Um, <clears throat> and so um, Dorothy's continues by saying, uh, lowliness is a great thing for every kind of good is advanced by lowliness. So if we have good in us by the grace of God, it is increased. And the opposite is, is true as well. If, if we have good in us, but we don't have humility, we begin to lose that blessing and that grace. <clears throat> because uh, the Lord turns his face away from the proud, but he exalts the lowly. <clears throat> um, and, and to go into the depth of humility, um, St. Dorotheus gives two different types of humility. 
related to two different types of pride. So it says the first type of pride is the person who is lifted up above everyone um, because uh, they have, uh, he says, because you're richer or more handsome or have beautiful possessions, and so you begin to despise your brother um, and you consider him little or nothing. <clears throat> um, and he says the other type of pride is the pride of the spiritual gifts um, when we receive, um, he says, if we keep vigil or fast or piety or rule of life or zeal, then you begin to grow vain or proud, proud about those things. So it's very tricky. Um, and that's why some of the fathers consider this the left hand blow and the right hand blow, or making sure we don't turn to the left or turn to the right. Um, turn to the, to the left with being proud um, of the things we have in the world, um, or to the right, being proud of the things that we have in the spirit by the grace of God. Um, <clears throat> and so the devil is keen to be able to fight us on both fronts. And so we have to have this balance. Um, <clears throat> and so he says, well, with the first type of pride of the, of the world, we need the first type of humility. He says, is to, to, instead of considering myself above my brother, I have to put myself under. And he says, um, to hold my brother to be wiser than myself and in all things to consider him higher. And simply as that holy man said, to put oneself below everyone. This is easier said than done, but at least we know the concept. Um, and, and by doing this, we get the grace of God. Uh, the humble shall be exalted, right? And vice versa. <clears throat> and so, um, like St. Paul says to the Romans, he says, in honor, giving preference to one another in chapter 12, uh, in the verse 10. And then a few verses later in verse 16, he says, do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. So the true humility is when you enter into the mind of the, yourself and see, well, what are the thoughts? Not just the actions, but what am I really thinking? And how am I viewing myself compared to others? Or even relating to my spiritual life and the things that I've attained by the grace of God. Um, and so a person may look very humble outwardly, but inside can be full of uh, uh, death, like the Lord says. Um, <clears throat> so we have to take care on this to not set m my mind on the high things, but associate with the humble and not to be wise in my own opinion. So that's the first type of humility that saves us from the first type of pride. The second type of humility that Dorotheus of Gaza says is to attribute to God all of the virtues and the virtuous actions. So we are supposed to do good in this life and to be the light of the world and to live a holy life. But... At the end, we realize it is not I, but the grace of God that is in me, as what St. Paul said. Um, so this is the perfect humility of the saints, is to attribute every good thing um, to God and not to myself, and to attribute every bad thing to my weakness and not to God. Oftentimes we do the opposite. <clears throat> so some um, litmus tests, or some um, a test to be able to tell you know, if true humility is, is existing in you by the grace of God or not. Um, St. Dorotheus gives some, and also um, other fathers give some as well. So the first thing he says, um, and this is a very deep concept, but he says, humility does not grow angry, neither does it anger anyone. So if I am humble, I won't be as angry as, uh, I'll be less angry than normal, probably not angry at all, right? And on top of that, so you can be not angry, but you can angry, anger everyone around you <laughs> and, and say, oh, I don't know what's wrong with them. But oftentimes it is our pride um, or selfishness that causes others to be angry at us. Um, of course, everyone has their own issues, that's not, but if, if everyone around you is angry, then you might be the source uh, or one source of that anger. Right? Um, and if you are angry all the time about things and other people, then it is your pride that, that is leading to this anger. <clears throat> of course, there is holy anger. We don't need to talk about that right now. Even the Lord uh, had exhibited holy anger when he um, went into the temple and cleansed it. That's not what we're talking about. And that's not, not, not what Dorotheus of Gaza is talking about here. Um, <clears throat> so... Um, even when you look at the story uh, in the gospel 
when the Lord asked Simon Peter to go and get a fish from the sea and take out the coin for the temple tax. Before that, he explains to them what? We don't need to pay. We are the children um, of, of the father. Does, does, does the son need to pay when he enters the house? No, of course not. But then he says, lest we offend them, um, do this. So sometimes we have to do things in order not to offend others out of love and out of humility. Um, <clears throat> the prou proud person would say, um, no, this is the right thing. I don't have to pay. Um, they can get angry however they want. Right? That's not the humble mind. Um, but we learn from the Lord in, in this way. Um, <clears throat> and so uh, Dorothy says, what is more grievous to a man than to grow angry and to anger his neighbor? Um, and so this is one of the major tests that we can tell if we're walking in the road of humility or not. Um, and if we're not, of course, we ask the grace of, of God to help us. And we practice this and, and, and uh, exercise ourselves in godliness in this way. <clears throat> so other ways um, to test, to see if we have this, um, it's related to the other virtues. So if I have the virtue of forgiveness, um, like St. Isaac the Syrian says, a brother asked an old man saying, what is humility? Sorry, this is in the desert father. A so one person asked, well, what is humility? Um, and the desert father responded saying, when your brother sins against you um, and you forgive him before he comes to, to ask for forgiveness. That's, that's the humble person. It's easy to, to forgive others. Right? <clears throat> but the person who holds a grudge, usually it's related to the sin of pride. Um, and the, the other one that St. Isaac the Syrian describes is the, the person who has peace. He says, no man has understanding if he is not humble, and he who lacks humility is devoid of understanding. No man is humble if he is not peaceful, and he who is not peaceful is not humble. So he's relating peacefulness and humility and understanding, and then later on joy and re rejoicing. Um, he says, all of these virtues are related. Related. It says, in this world, the person will not find peace until they draw near to God um, and hope in God. <clears throat> and so this is just some of the litmus test to see if I'm really growing in the virtue of being like the child, or am I I'm maturing? As I am maturing, I'm maturing in sin. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes even when you you uh, interact with the child, and sometimes they they hear of or they see um, sin and they begin to ask because they don't even understand the depth of, of the sin. Um, that's, that's the type of uh, childlikeness that we need to have. <clears throat> so how, how to grow in humility? I think that's the main point. The first thing is to be teachable, to be obedient and ready to listen, as uh, Dorothea says. Be ready to listen whenever a word is spoken to us. And he says to submit because through humility, every device of the enemy, every kind of obstacle is destroyed. Just like St. James says in his um, epistle, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to wrath or anger. So see how the anger comes in, right? So we have to, the person who is quick to listen and quick to learn and quick to obey and quick to submit, that's a humble person. The person who said, no, let me, let, let me think about this further. I have a better idea of how this sh should work, or I don't need to listen to anyone. I know the right thing. Um, that's usually the, the, the proud person, right? <clears throat> um, but being quick to listen and slow to speak. The person who wants to speak quickly and give their opinion and convince others without even letting them speak, uh, there, there's probably not, there's some humility to gain uh, in that person. <clears throat> Um, and so, like the Psalms say, the humble, God teaches them their way, right? The humble, he teaches his way, and the humble, he guides in justice. Um, and so God wants to work with the humble person because it's easy. He just says one thing and they do it. And then th that's how the, the saints grow in virtue is because they already learned the basic lessons that maybe some of us are still struggling with, and he's, they're, they're, um, they're advancing, um, but sometimes we have to learn and relearn and, and relearn the same lesson because we're not, it's not that we're not getting it, but oftentimes it's because we're too proud to submit to the, to the wisdom behind the how to 
grow in, in that virtue. <clears throat> so the obedience is, is the first key. The second one is to change our view or to adjust our comparisons um, that we typically make, right? So the first thing that we do is um, we compare ourselves with, with our fellow uh, brothers and sisters, right? Instead of doing that, we have to compare ourselves to perfection or to God, right? Because if we compare ourselves to others, and usually we select the people who are maybe not as um, successful in a certain area, so then we comfort ourselves, kind of like the publican and the Pharisee, right? He went into uh, to pray and he said, well, thank God I am not like this guy, right? Um, it's, it's easy to find someone or to think that that person is lower than us. But in reality, God justified uh, the, the publican um, and he went away justified rather than the, the, the other person. <clears throat> and so um, the more I compare myself with my fellow brother, the more I'm, it's a useless exercise. But if I compare myself to God and perfection and the, the, the holy life, then I always will find myself short and lacking and in need of God's grace. Um, <clears throat> and so um, Dorothy's gives an example of when you travel to different areas right, and countries and begin to compare yourself to others. He says, well, um, you go from one place to another and... Uh, things might be okay. But then he ends by saying, well, when you go to the emperor and you compare yourself with the emperor, what do you, what do you think of yourself then? And then he says, um, I would think of myself as one of the poor. Um, then he said, there you are. In the same way, the saints, the nearer they approach to God, the more they see themselves as sinners. So we don't approach ourselves and compare ourselves with other sinners because we're all sinners in one thing or another, but we compare ourselves to God and then we realize I am a sinner. Um, uh, end of story. So um, he says, um, unless someone learns this by experience, he cannot learn it by verbal teaching. Um, so I, I need to begin to think of myself in this way. When I evaluate myself, I compare myself to complete perfection rather than um, others around me. <clears throat> so the other thing I need to adjust my comparison with is to focus on the sin and not the virtue, or to focus on, um, I focus on the sins of myself, right? Um, and I and I compare the virtue of others, um, or I, I, I see that I, I try to increase my um, ability to find virtue in others, as well as increase my ability to find the sin in myself. So oftentimes, I'm looking for the sin in other people, and I'm ignoring the sin in myself, right? But we have to turn that uh, 180 degrees and say, well, okay, let me focus more. Let me magnify my own sin and minimize the sin of my brother and sister. And that's, that's the humble person and the wise person. <clears throat> um, and uh, there's plenty to say about this, but um, this is kind of what St. Augustine says about this is the medicine of repentance that helps heal the person who realizes that they're sick when they go to the true physician. Um, <clears throat> and so, and then he uses the verse, God resists the proud, but gives grace um, or healing or, or, or virtue to, to, the, to the humble. So oftentimes we minimize our sins and we magnify our virtue, but we need to do the opposite. Um, and, and so minimize your virtue and because you realize it's from God and not from yourself, like we said before, and you magnify your sins because you realize when you reflect that, that this is coming from you. Um, <clears throat> so um, the last point um, is that we try to remember our humble beginnings and forget our current achievements. As St. Paul says uh, in Philippians, he says, not that I have already attained um, or I'm already perfected, even though he was growing in grace uh, daily and St. Paul, right? <laughs> um, but he says, but I press on that I might lay hold of that which for what Christ has laid hold of me. He says, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting the things which are behind and reaching forward to those which are ahead. 
So not even I have many, let's say we have many achievements, um, even spiritually, we forget those things and, and look at to what we still have to do. Even if we've attained 95%, well, what about that last 5%? Um, and that's why the Lord um, wants us to strive for perfection because we will always come up lacking. There is no one who is 100% pure except for our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, <clears throat> and so um, even to compare ourselves with the saints is, is not wise, right? Because when we do so, we're going to come up lacking as well. Um, <clears throat> so as, as the Lord says in the gospel, likewise, when you have, even if you've done all the things that have been commanded, you say, we are unprofitable servants. We've only done what is our duty to do. Um, so to conclude, um, humility is a very important virtue that all of us need to attain by the grace of God and by putting our brother above us instead of below us. And by realizing that every grace and virtue and good gift and success is from God and not myself. And then to adjust my comparisons by realizing that I need to, not to compare myself with my fellow brother, but to realize how I come up short when, when I compare myself with God. And then ask him to give me the grace and the blessing and to be quick to, to listen and slow to speak and slow to wrath. Glory be to God now and to each other.